how do we do it in the communist army? Hello, comrades. Better, better. Welcome to tonight's briefing. Tonight, we will be demonstrating this captured Enigma machine from the German army, fresh from the battlefield. I can't keep this up, I can't do it. Hello. <laughs> My name's James. Uh, currently, I can't see a thing. Hi. I'm gonna assume you're there. Yeah? Can I, give me some, say hi. Hi. Right, okay, you are there. Right, uh, let me introduce myself quickly. Uh, so my name's James. Uh, let's see if I've got my... Hey, look at that. Uh, I, am a, I work at Cambridge University. Um, I'm a mathematician, but don't worry, I'm very nice really. Okay. Uh, and I'm here uh, to show you uh, this wonderful uh, Enigma machine. So, like I said, this was used by Nazi Germany in World War II to send their secret coded messages. Now the machine here that we're gonna show off is from World War II. This is the original Enigma machine. It's not a copy, it's not a replica, this is it. It was made in 1936, it is now 75 years old, and uh, well, that's what we're gonna do. Well, I'll tell you what, um, myself, I'm not, uh, unlike many of you, I am not a programmer, I'm not a coder, I am a mathematician, uh, so um, just to show you uh, what it's like to be a mathematician, let's see if this works. Good. Okay, just so you know, I don't know if there are any mathematicians in the audience, take pity on them, you'll, you'll recognise them, uh, if there are any mathematicians, this is me working at Cambridge University. This is what I do for a living. This is my job, he says, I hope. That, that's what I do for a living. That's me hard at work. Right, I'll do it for you, I'll do it for you, right, right. I'm gonna do it now. Thank you, I get paid for this. I get paid for this. This is what I do for a living. So, uh, oh, and now, I'll add this as well. I don't always do this, but it's, it's quite exciting. I do work at Cambridge. Probably the world's most famous mathematician is Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking actually has the office directly above my office. I know, you're right to go room, yeah. You'd think they'd put him on the ground floor, wouldn't you? Yeah. No, no they don't, they don't. It's directly above me. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work as well. Uh, coming up, this should be a picture of me and, and Stephen Hawking at Cambridge. Let's see if this works. Oh, okay. Obviously, obviously not. That's, that's me and the, the bust that we have of Stephen Hawking. Although he does, he does work in the office above me. Uh, here's another picture of me and Stephen Hawking. <laughs> bit weird, that one, bit weird. Then I got a bit carried away. <laughs> He loves it. Look at his little face. He loves it. The, the point I'm trying to make is I'm going to show you what it's like to do what I do. And the second type of code we've shown is a transposition cipher. That's when you mix up letters into a anagram. That's what we're going to do. However, that's not what Enigma does. Enigma is another type of code. Enigma is a substitution code. It replaces a letter for a different letter. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, now the guy who first did this, or one of the people who first did this, little history lesson here, one of the people who first did this was Julius Caesar. I'll just put up a picture of Julius Caesar, there he is, just in case you forget. Julius Caesar, leader of Rome, winner of the Mr. Lovely Legs competition, 43 BC. Julius Caesar has to send his secrets in code, and he did. Actually, Julius Caesar used to make up codes himself. Which I love. Julius Caesar was a nerd. I love that. So he used to make up his own code. Now, uh, the one I'm going to show you is a really easy one. It's a children's code. We're going to do it, right? We're going to do it together, right? We're going to break a code or write a code. All right. So, oh, there we go. There's the alphabet. I write out the alphabet underneath it. Very simple, two alphabets. But the trick to it is one of those alphabets slides across. So I'm going to slide the red alphabet three places left, 
There you go, so it looks like this, D, E, F, G, blah, 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 with the A, B, C at the end. Okay, right, we're going to try and send a secret message. Where's Julius Caesar? Great. Julius Caesar is sending a message to his best friend, Mark Antony, <laughs> in code. So it's going to be something like... <laughs> Toga party tonight. Julius Caesar, he's having a party. Brutus is not invited to this party. <laughs> so he writes it in code. Now, I am going to ask you to do this. There's going to be some audience participation. Are you ready? Right, we're going to do this letter by letter. The first letter is T. So what does T become in this code? W. Yeah, W, right? O is A. R. R. And G is A. Uh, yeah. A and so on. Right, yes, yes. Yeah, right. So we fill this in, right? And this is what you get. And you get nonsense. You get a code. Now, obviously, this is not a very hard code to do. Um, when you shift the alphabet, you can shift it one or two or three or four or five or twenty or twenty-six. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. If you shift it twenty-six, it's the worst code in the world. If you shift it twenty-six, you end up all the way back to where you started. Uh, in a French field after the war. Um, I, d I don't know, I imagine it's sort of half sunk in the mud, I don't know. And he took it home as a souvenir. And then when the, ge the gentleman who found it, when he died, and he died about 10 years ago, this machine was sold. And it was sold to a man called Simon Singh. Uh, and I don't know if you know Simon, so this is Simon. There you go, there's Simon going, oh, huh? that's not a magnifying glass, by the way. He just has one really massive eye. Simon Singh, uh, he's an author of popular science books, and he owns this machine. It's his, it's privately owned, it's his machine. It doesn't belong to a museum, um, and it doesn't belong to my university. Uh, Simon lends it to me. Um, Simon bought it so that he could uh, show it off to people like, like I'm doing today, to show it off. And um, when he got bored of doing this, he started to employ someone to do it for him. Um, and I'm the third person to take on this job, uh, which by my reckoning makes me the Tom Baker of Simon Sinks. <laughs> That's a Doctor Who joke for anyone who doesn't know. That was especially for Jonas. There you go. I was. I was going to have a picture of me dressed up as Tom Baker, but I couldn't do the face, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> so, this, uh, so let's have a look at, at this machine. That's, that's the story of this machine. So it was used in France. It's an army Enigma machine. Uh, let's try and take a look at it. We've got lights, which is great. And so that we can see it, I'm just going to move it slightly. We'll try that. Yeah, we'll try that. So that everyone can see it, we should be able to do this. Hey. So I can go, whoa. Right, so we can all see what's going on. Now, uh, one word of warning. Um, so I'm going to show you how it works. It is an old machine. It is 75 years old. If it doesn't work, forgive me. Um, it should do, fingers crossed, it should work. But if it doesn't, it is old. We'll, we'll try this out and have a look. Okay, so let's, let's open it up. This is inside the machine. Let's try and put this in. Hello. We'll take a look inside. Let's open it up. Click. And there it is. It's a beautiful machine. It's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It, it looks like a typewriter. It's pretty much a typewriter. It's uh, 1940s technology. It's wood. It's steel. It's mechanical. Um, it weighs 13 kilograms, which is the equivalent of 31 kilogram weights. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. Let's see how it works. Okay. I'm going to send something. I'm going to do a, a message in code. Uh, okay, so if I say hello, let's see what we got. Let's go try and do it from here. Hello is the message. So H. Fantastic. If I press H, 
Can you see the letter V lights up? This is your code. The letters that light up are the code. So let's try this again. Let's do the E for hello. Great, that's the letter S. Let's do the L. That's an R. The second L in hello will do this. That's an A this time. And then we finish it off, we'll do the message, it's hello, so O. There you go, that's the letter E. And that's the code. Now this machine doesn't transmit, and they never did. The machines don't transmit. What you do, oh, what you do is you write down the message that lights up, the code that lights up. You write that down on a piece of paper, and you give that to the radio operator, he transmits it by Morse code, that's a separate person. Now, and you may have seen what happened there. Now, uh, you may have noticed the two L's in hello became two different letters. Like the Virginaire cipher, it's a polyalphabetic cipher. It's a constantly changing code. So double letters may not necessarily be double letters. You can't use this trick looking for the most common letters. It doesn't work like that. Let's have a look at what's going on. If I can open it up. Before I do, as I on screen this, let me show you that again. If I press K, since it's close to me, if I press K, there we go, that's the letter T. Now if I keep pressing this, you see it keeps changing. Now, and it's, and it's random, at least from the outside, it looks random. It's not truly random, it's a mechanical machine. But at least from the outside, it does look random. You have no idea what's going to come up next. So let's have a look how this works. If I unscrew this, open up the lid. This is inside the machine. I'm just building up the tension. That's all I'm doing. I can tell you, by the way. <laughs> what's happened? Something's happened behind me. I can tell you. This machine, there's, you do have one. They're, they're very rare. In museums, there's about 20 in museums, um, which is not a lot worldwide. I know you have one here in Finland, in Riemaki. Uh, and, and you've got two tonight, so that's good. So, let's take a look inside. Ba -ba -ba. There we go. And there it is. So, what we've got, let's have a look. Up here, these are just light bulbs. Uh, up here, one, two, three. We have three things. These are called rotors. These are the infamous rotors, the famous rotors. And inside the rotors, Imagine lots of crisscross wires. They're all mixed up like spaghetti, they're all crisscross wires. Uh, oh, let's have a look. If I press a letter. So the rotors turn. They rotate, which is why they're called rotors. So they turn. When this rotor does a full revolution, when it goes all the way, it will kick the middle rotor one place. Now, I don't know when it's going to happen. Click, click, click. When it does a revolution, there. It kicks the middle rotor in one place. When the middle rotor does a revolution, it will kick the left-hand rotor in one place. So this is the fast rotor. That's the middle rotor. That's the slow-moving rotor. So they move at different speeds, uh, like, like it's hands on a clock, like it's a minute hand, hour hand, second hand. They move at different speeds. Now, there are three rotors in the machine. You actually had a box of five to choose from. You would have a box of five rotors. You pick three from a box of five, you put them into the machine. Let's see what else can I show you. Down here at the front. Now this is a little difficult, I'm going to try and show you, it's a little difficult to see because it's in black. Uh, but if I pull this out, uh, I'll try to do it, there we go, I'll, I'll hold it on my hand. What we have here is something called the plug board, the stecker board. And what you have are ten wires, it's kind of like an old fashioned telephone switchboard. Uh, ten wires which connects, try not to be in your way. I do. So I, I, I show, I show this enigma often. Um, light bulbs. I haven't changed. In the lid. 
These are spares. You can see that. Spare light bulbs, spare wire. Uh, I'll show you in the later part. These are the instructions here. Uh, they look intriguing, they're actually quite boring, but that helps me. And this, I like, this is the logo, this is the brand. This is a brand of the machine, it's a company. I'll change the pattern. Yeah, this is the